Secrets of Womanhood, inspired by true stories. Title sponsor, QBB Ghee, excellent for cooking, baking, and barbecue. Associate sponsor, Papa G's, delicious vegetarian delights. F&B partner, Casa, Grill and Mezabar, supported by Geo Energy Care, solving problems of life. Wardrobe by Stalmart, trendsetters of Indian fashion wear in Singapore. <laughs> God's perfect creations, yet we're often judged for the way the Lord above made us. Living a life with disabilities and challenges can hold us back from opportunities in life and work. We are gifted with children with disabilities, yet the society's silence can be deafening and holds us back. Today we have with us four amazing guests and inspirational guests who are going to share with us how they overcame their challenges. Please join me in welcoming Shilpa. Hi Shilpa. Hi Shan. Thank you. Shilpa was affected with Bell Palsy in the midst of her life, resulting in paralysis of her face. She shares her story with us and also how blessed she has been to have a great support system, her family and friends. Our next guest is Michelle. Hi Michelle. Hi, thank you for having me. Michelle was born with one arm, yet she defied that and now she is a teacher, has a driving license and even engages in scuba diving. Next guest is Vijay. Hi Vijay. <laughs> Vijay was born with hearing loss in both his ears, yet today he's a successful IT professional and runs an NGO for hearing impaired children. And our next guest is Sunita. Hi Sunita. Hello. Sunita has written a book about a mother who shows her strength in taking care of two disabled children. So let's get started to have our conversations. Michelle, it's no secret that you have one arm. Tell us about how it impacted your childhood. Because I was born like that, um and at that time, there was no scanning or anything of that sort in the late 70s. As I grew up along the years, I never saw anyone else like me. So I thought that, you know, oh wow, I'm so special. And I remember the first time I actually saw someone with a disability like mine in, when I was about four. And it was a friend of my grandmother's. And we were walking in her direction and she was walking towards us and then I saw her arm and I was, oh my goodness, you know? I don't know if I was more upset about having someone else like me. Losing you know, your uniqueness? Yeah, you know, you're losing my uniqueness at that point, but I, I remember it very vividly. What were some of the things that you were called when you were bullied? Oh, wow. A list of names. I was called um, Captain Hook, which I, quite, which I laugh about now. Um, I was called Chachat, which is in, in, a, in a dialect, means disabled in a very rude way. Living with disability, we get to that stage of defying it and, and we know that this is not going to hold us back. And speaking with you today, you're full of that zest. Thank you. But was there ever a moment in your life when it was really hard, really low, and it really was, was the most painful part of your life? You know, there are many times where you would um, um, you know, I make it look easy, but it's not as easy as, as I make it look. So there are many times where you just get very frustrated with yourself, you know. If you, you, you can't do a certain thing, or if you know you have to go through the process of having to let a person know you have one arm, or even when you go for a job interview, for example, I have to tell the interviewer who wouldn't notice 99% of the time that I have a disability, and it could, it could lose my chance of getting that, the job, for example, or something like that, you know? And that is quite stressful because it's in your mind, right? You're thinking about it, you know? Oh, I hope I don't lose that job because I don't have an arm. But I've been very lucky in that sense that people have been very accepting 
of me. But you know, it's, I think it's human nature as well. So Sunita, you've written the book from a mother's perspective. How was the experience in the book and in terms of the amazing courage that we have here? Courage is a great word that you've used, Sam. Um, a woman, a mother, uh, plays a very important role in a special needs child's life. And as Michelle was saying, um, it, it, it's always the mother who plays, because she's there, she's like a punching bag, and she's always there for the child. And it's important that the mother keeps the child afloat and um, doesn't indulge or overindulge a child, because at the end of the day, she has to bring the child to the point where the child or the children are going to be able to face the world. Let's take a short break on that note and then come back with QBB Presents Secrets of Womanhood. QBB Presents Secrets of Womanhood, inspired by true stories. I love coming for dinners at your place. Oh really? Why? What why? Don't you know? We love the food you serve. It tastes great. The taste is excellent. Well, the secret to my recipe is QBB ghee. But isn't ghee fattening? Oh, it's good fat. In fact, two spoons of QBB pure ghee on a daily basis gives you all the nourishment for good skin, body and joints. QBB pure ghee is trusted over many generations. QBB presents Secrets of Womanhood, inspired by true stories. Welcome back to QBB presents Secrets of Womanhood and let's continue our conversation with our very inspiring guests for today. Facial yeah. paralysis due to Bell Palsy yeah. in the midst of your life. Yeah. How was that? Um, what was the experience like? I think a very random uh, episode in my life which, were, which came up just after I came back from a yoga class. Totally, I was not sick, I was not unwell, I was not uh, in any bad shape. Just sipping a glass of water, I realized that I was not able to drink the water at all and it kept spurting out of my mouth. And for a, for a certain time, you're not able to understand what's happening and then you realize your face is curling, your, uh, your lips are kind of not listening to you. And then I had to you know, actually see my face and I found it's totally dark and it kind of twisted. So when I went to the neurophysician, the first thing he asked me was, did you have any fever or cold? And I said, yeah, I had it around three weeks back. So he said, okay, because this seems to be a viral infection called the Bell's palsy, which has affected your facial nerves. And it's good that you were able to take such a proactive step because uh, within 48 hours, if you don't take treatment, uh, it kind of becomes irreversible. And my eyes would not close because one part of my face was overcompensating for this part, which had gone limp. So I couldn't eat, uh, the food would not move from one side of the face to the other side. What and emotional uh, consequence did it have on this, a mental and emotional challenge? The mentally it was, uh, it was challenging, I reflected a lot, you know, within this whole thing um, I had to deal suddenly with my dad suddenly passing away. He used to call me every day and say, you know, Bitto, did you do your this, Bitto, did you do that and have you taken your medicine and one day he was not there. So I think after that, um, the whole thing that anything can go wrong with you, anything can go wrong with the people around you, they may not be there, right? And I just, it just came from within and I started writing, uh, I picked up my phone and I just started writing my first poem. Vijay, you were born with hearing loss in both ears. So how is this, uh, with someone who has hearing impairment, how do you teach listening? I will give you an example. Uh, if you can hold your hand for a moment, can you make a sure. face? Uh, make a face? See, uh, when I'm trying to teach um, father and your daughter, okay? So when I'm trying to teach, I have to say the letter A. Uh, I put my put a hand uh, into my throat and I say A, okay? And then I put it back on the throat and I ask her to repeat it. She may, make, she may uh, imitate it properly, she may, but what do you feel? You feel some vibration, yeah. okay? Similarly, I put it again in my stomach, and I say, A. You feel some kind of a contraction of the stomach, okay? And then put it back on the stomach and make it repeat, A. a. Similarly, in the, now, in, K, in, the, in case of the letter, K. K. Now, when I put it back on it, say, K. The vibration is there, but very quick. And uh, when I put it again in the stomach, I say, K. The vibration here, there's no, there's no contraction or anything because the effort is basically coming from the throat. Again, one more thing I put, K. The air is coming out very fast. 
and then I put it back on my uh, throat, mouth, and stomach, and I acted a little bit. So this is a basic technique that is used to teach a child about how to uh, say each and every letter. It's amazing how you were taught, yeah. uh, and obviously your family was very committed in helping you. Yeah. Work. Yeah. Has the experience been in finding work? Has there been challenges, any jobs that you felt that you lost the opportunity because of hearing loss? Uh, many companies uh, have rejected me outright uh, the moment they knew I'm hearing bad. A lot of problems in finding jobs whenever I tried. Other people are very nasty, dependent on telephones. I cannot hear on the phone. That is the one thing I can't do. And uh, even to today, sometimes I do face situations where I'm not allowed to do something or I'm being held back from doing something because of the ignorance or lack of awareness on the part of other people. So that uh, the mental attitude uh, of others has been something which has been quite frustrating for me even to today. And I don't think it will change uh, for a very, but I'm very uh, enough uh, for it to be perfect. What does your wife do? My wife's name is uh, Mahak. She helps with the community services in the Indian Women's Association. I've been so inspired listening to what you had to say. We have with us a special guest who'd like to meet with you. Your wife? Hi, Mehak. Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. She's uh, truly special. So, so what would like to, uh, what you like Tell us how she's special. <laughs> well, uh, I have been married for about uh, six years, and uh, she's one person who I'm extremely lucky to have uh, as a partner, life partner. Mehak? Yes, I'm glad that, uh, you know, make him feel special. I think, no, uh, I, I'm really grateful for that. Have you yourself ever been through difficulty in life that you can relate to him? Yes, I am. A, I have a disability myself. I am able to definitely relate to him. I mean, my disability and his disability are very different, but uh, then disability is a disability. I mean, no. I have a weak eyesight from birth and uh, for which I've been operated and things are under control. But yes, I did face a lot of challenges. In school more, I would say. Academics-wise, maths and science was a challenge. The rest of the subjects were okay, but maths and science, then again, you had to be very precise and I wouldn't get my points right in geometry and I wouldn't get the equations right in algebra. I'll tell you, I'm, I'm very open and I can keep, go on talking, so please just stop me whenever you feel like it. Right now, we're stuck on you like glue, so please <laughs> tell us. <laughs> Once, uh, the teacher did tell me that, why don't you take lower maths? You know, 8, 9, 10th is very difficult and, you know, you just take lower maths. I said, no, and I was a very stubborn kid and my parents really convinced me. They really tried very hard. But I kind of, I said, no, I'm going to do regular maths. I didn't score very well in the 10th, but I scored very well in the 12th compared to what I did. I had a 64 in the 12th, thanks to French. And French is a different story which I'll tell you about. You can ask me in between whatever questions you have. So you can mm. stop me whenever you like. Fifth, sixth, seventh, I couldn't take uh, Marathi. Marathi was the second language in Bombay. They said, okay, three years you don't do anything. You just do two languages. And eight, nine, tenth, you take uh, French. First time in the eighth, I flunked my French exam very badly. I had a 13 out of 50. And the teacher told me, Mehak, I think, uh, I think you should uh, change to Marathi. I said, no, I am definitely going to do French. And then I had tuitions, I did whatever I could. And to the point where I can converse in French now. About, I don't know how many years ago, we went to Europe. And I had a conversation in France with a French guy. I wanted to ask him directions. Whether should I go left or right? How did you say it? Alevu Druata Oagosh. Great, well done. QBB presents Secrets of Womanhood, inspired by true stories. 
I love coming for dinners at your place. Oh, really? Why? What why? Don't you know? We love the food you serve. It tastes great. The taste is excellent. Well, the secret to my recipe is QVB ghee. But isn't ghee fattening? Oh, it's good fat. In fact, two spoons of QBB pure ghee on a daily basis gives you all the nourishment for good skin, body and joints. QBB pure ghee is trusted over many generations. Our favourite hair grow back shampoo. Meet the Shampoo Hero Bio Royale Growback Shampoo. Daily use natural shampoo that can be effective for everyone. Bio Royale Growback Shampoo helps in the following ways. This is a secret that you'll want to keep. QBB presents Secrets of Womanhood, inspired by true stories. Welcome to QBB Presents Secrets of Womanhood. It's our special show on people with special needs. And now it's time for the secret recipe with our celebrity chef, Chef Devagi Shanmugam. Welcome. Hello, how are you? Very good. What are we doing today? Yeah, okay, I'm going to do something simple. Okay. So it's basically lime and coriander chicken on a bit of couscous. Lovely. Well, we have Michelle with us today, who actually was born with just one arm. So hopefully this is so simple that we could do it with one hand. I think it's possible. Oh, let's do it. Let's <laughs> okay. go for it. Only one hand. Only one hand. We're going to do that. We're going to try, try that. Try? Yes. Okay. So I need mayonnaise for this. Okay. Three tablespoons of mayonnaise. Some melted ghee. Some lime juice. And then I have some coriander leaves, sugar, okay. salt, a bit of pepper. I'm going to just mix all this. No, don't okay. hold it. Let me see. Okay. So I have chicken. Yes. It's like boneless. So you, you mix all this together and pour with this. Great. Okay, so I am trying to use a glove. Okay. I can't use. So let me see if I can just skewer this. Sure. Good. 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 There we go. We have one skewer ready. Yeah. We just have to skewer this, put it onto a baking tray, and then bake it for about 25 minutes or until it's slightly, it will not turn golden brown because there's mayonnaise, right? So mm. it will be a bit pale, but slightly burnt texture is fine. Um, and then you just serve it on a bit of like um, couscous. Lovely. So Chef Devki, that is amazing. I, you, you have just proven to all of our viewers that even if catastrophe strikes you, instantaneously you can have that attitude of, I can do it. Yeah, you have to be just positive all the while. Everything yeah? is possible, okay, right? Okay, so now the next dish is the couscous dish. Let's do it. So now we have the ingredients for the couscous, some olives, sun-dried tomatoes, and then I have avocado. This is at the time, at the point when we are serving, we can throw some there okay. because um, it gives a nice uh, texture. And um, some salad leaves if you need some salad by your chicken. Yeah, I boil some vegetable uh, stock. Okay. You can do it in the form of a cube or vegetables. Now, if I can you're, smell the celery in there. Yes. And if you are a non-vegetarian, of course, you can use uh, chicken stock or right. meat stock. So it's celery, carrot, right. and onions. And okay, lovely. Add a bit of salt. What's the ratio of stock to couscous that you've used? Um, okay, for 400 grams, you can add about um, maybe 750 or 500. Okay. Add a bit of ghee. Now, we need ghee in this because we want the couscous to stay separate and okay. whole when it's when we have completed um, right. it, right? Hmm. So now okay. we just close it for okay, about five minutes. Let it sit. So I close it because we want the steam yes. to build it up inside. And then wait for five minutes and then we'll be done. Great. So after five minutes, I just fluff it up with a fork. Wow, the stock has left some nice colourful greenery on the couscous. Yes. And um, I'm now going to add in the sun-dried sun tomatoes, the olives, and mix it through. So this is done. 
I just need to serve it up. Serve it up. Um, put Lovely. My skewer. And the then avocado. some nice greenery on top with yeah. the avocado. And avocado. again. And some green leaves if you Very nice. want it. So it's a there lovely you lunch. Are. Voila, thank you, madame. That's wonderfully done with one hand. Yes. Mm, very nice. So, let, shall we try the chicken? Please do. Okay. okay, talking about the chicken, if you don't want to skewer it, it's fine. What you have to do is just heat some QBB ghee, put the marinated chicken inside, and just do a stir fry. And with serving it with the couscous is the plus point because the couscous is small, mm. fine, and you, you feel like you can eat more. I well, like a biryani. Thank you so much, Chef. This has been amazing um, on our special needs show to have you cook this with one hand. Okay. And to show our viewers how easy it is to make this happen. Thank you so much. Thank you. Let's do our rapid fire round. Are you ready? Yes? If God tells you that you can deposit some body fat on a part of your body, what part would that be? Maybe some good uh, fat on cheekbones to make them more prominent. Nice. Michelle, if someone said that they've never been attracted to another man or a woman other than their spouse, they are? Lying. Mehek. If uh, you could write your own story, what would the title of that book be? The Contented Soul. Nice. Vijay, your best friend tells you to come and meet his girlfriend. When you go there, you realise that this girlfriend of your best friend is your girlfriend too. What do you do? Okay, I will tell the girl you have two choices. Uh, either be with me or I find a new girlfriend. Oh, okay. Sunita, what do you think attracts men the most? Nail polish, perfume, eye makeup, lipstick, lingerie, or something else? Eye makeup, I think. Mm -hmm. Let's see now. I have to choose a winner. The QBB gift hamper goes to Mehek. Thank you. I'm not going to send you guys uh, empty handed. I have some Papa G's gift hampers for you all. I hope you enjoyed being on Secrets of Womanhood today. We thoroughly enjoyed having your insights and your sharing. Thank you so much. Thank you for being with us today on QBB Presents Secrets of Womanhood. Secrets of Womanhood, inspired by true stories. Today on Secrets of Womanhood, we spoke about disabilities. No life is perfect, but with the change in our mindset, we can have a life full of endless possibilities. It's our responsibility as media, society, employers, schools, and fellow human beings to raise our voices to support a quality and fulfilling life regardless of challenges. Till next time, may peace, happiness and success be with you. Produced by Video House, an international production house based in Singapore.